Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you uh, to uh, create and assemble one a rack and a pinion and the other one bevel gears. Create a bevel and a pinion for it and then assemble them and get them to work correctly in SOLIDWORKS. So let's get to it. So let's say we go to toolbox and we go to NC metric power transmission gears and then uh, first thing we go and create a rack and we also need what the spool gear right so if we go for the rack and say create part so here you have a gear modulus and remember that the gear modulus should be the same again for the rack and pinion so let's say i go with the modulus of four and pressure angle 20 is good face 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 width of six is good pitch height here is the height of the pitch line really from the base and uh, 10 is good but if you want to uh, raise it a little bit raise the profile a little bit you can increase that so 12 and the length 150 is the total length show all teeth everything good so uh, we go ahead and save this part right so we call it rack let's say put it here and then i need a, a spool gear so let's go for a spool gear we're going to use the same gear modulus for number of teeth you can change it to any that you want to any is good the same pressure angle the face width for the other one was six mil so let's go with six and here uh, the hub style and nominal shaft diameter any of those are not super essential right now so I just go with this and uh, save this also as the pinion now it has uh, a bunch of teeth for a pinion but uh, it might really be those many so this one I'm going to call it uh, the rack pinion okay so now that these two are uh, ready I'm gonna go to assembly and I'm going to bring the two parts. Now, um, the pinion was a little bit uh, too big for that rack. So I made the rack twice as long. So I made this rack two, which is twice longer, 300 mil in length. So that is a little bit more appropriate. Okay. So now that we have the two components, make sure both of them can move. And now it's time to put them together. So the first thing is... Uh, let's go ahead and put maybe the front face of both of them on the front plane so they are both on the same plane and um, like this so now they are on the same um, plane and now we need to um, basically have this uh, rack uh, that in a way that it can only move forward and backward so the uh, one motion of it is fixed by the coincidence the other thing i can do is i can put this guy on the top plane of the assembly that way the only thing that the rack can do is forward and backward motion so now the only thing right now that the rack can do is this motion which is exactly what i want and now the other thing we need to do is to put the gear in the proper place, right? The proper distance, the center of it from the rack. And then we're going to do the rack and pinion uh, constraint. So what I need to do here is if I go to the rack and go to the um, uh, tooth cut, right? So we have the tooth cut. This is the profile. We can make it visible here right and then i can go to the pinion and uh here the tooth cut again and i make that sketch also visible so i can see the pit circle of the gear and the pitch line of the rack so now i click on this one and i click on this one and i'm going to uh, basically make them tangent if it allows me to uh seems like uh it did not necessarily do that if that's the case then you have to provide a distance between them okay and the distance then from the center to this line 
is going to be the radius of the pit circle. And if you remember, with the module that we use and the number of teeth, the diameter of the pit circle is 80 or the radius is 40. So if I can set this distance from here to here at 40, that should also do the job for me. So let's go ahead and do this distance at 40 mil here. And uh, let me change it to mil so it shows that it is... Uh, basically at 40 mil, okay? So um, here, you see the distance is 40 mil. So that's the appropriate distance. Now, let's go ahead and apply the mechanical constraint. But before that, you make sure that there is no interference between the teeth. So right now there is none. So I go to uh, mates, mechanical, and I choose a, uh, rack and pinion and it says what is the rack so i choose uh, this as the rack or i can choose probably this line for the rack this one if it allows me to go with that one and for pinion i also choose this uh pit circle there and uh hopefully this is going to do the job. Let's go ahead and run it. There we go. You see, it is doing a beautiful job. So all you need to do is to go to those sketches and hide them. Here, I just uh, hit those and change the color of them. And you can see that it is doing this uh, beautiful job for you here. Okay, so this is what this is a... Uh, rack and the pinion. One other thing you might want to do here is uh, the pinion, uh, the distance of the pinion to the rack is all um, fixed, but the pinion can move left and right, and probably that's not what you want. So uh, we have to fix the pinion in place so it just spins and not freely move left and right, unless that's what you want, right? So there is some object attached to this uh, pinion, and rack is the input mechanism, and that makes this uh, pinion the, and the object attached to it move left and right, which is not a typical case, because typically pinion is the driver attached to a motor, and the object attached to the rack is the output. So for that case, you want to fix the pinion in place, and uh, for that, we can use a sketch here. So I go to the front plane and I'm going to uh, basically use this sketch and convert it. And then uh, so that this circle doesn't move with the gear, I get rid of that. The only thing I really want is that vertical distance. Okay, so I want this to be the fixed distance that there is. And let's say here I put this point right above the origin. And the dimension of that is whatever it is right now, which is the size of the shaft hole. So now that is in place. And if I move this, okay, that sketch, I should be allowed to uh, change it. And here... So let me go ahead and uh, rotate this so we can see, okay? You see, they can come off right now. So now uh, I make this one and this one concentric. Now pay attention when you do that, you are defining the distance between that axis and this bottom uh, surface twice because you already did it with this extra distance here. So if you do that, you're gonna over define the assembly but that's okay, we can take care of that. So when you choose those two and say concentric, look, here it says, hey, add this mate and break the other ones. You say, fine, do that. And now you need to go ahead and get rid of this distance, okay? If you do that, now you have defined that distance once. And now you should be able to what? You should be able to spin the gear in place. So uh, let's go ahead and see if the gear is spinning in place. There we go, it does. There is some interference though that you have to 
fixed so temporarily deactivate the gear constraint and move the rack a little bit so it goes to no interference and then bring back the rack and pinion so now it should do the proper job if you go ahead and rotate the pinion now there we go you see the pinion does not move left and right and it's only the rack that is going left and right so this is proper assembly of rack and pinion so now that we have seen this one I want us to go to the uh, bevel gears so here I go to my toolbox again and uh, we're gonna go to power transmission again this time the gears so we need a bevel gear straight and a bevel uh, pinion straight so go ahead and let's go ahead and create the uh, bevel gear and we're gonna go with a modulus of five again and 32 teeth is good for the pinion we go with 16 pressure angle 20 is good face width of 20 is good we use a hop diameter which is the diameter of uh, this guy in the back diameter of this shaft of 50 and then a mounting distance which determines the depth okay or the length of this shaft we go with the 52 and 24 nominal shaft diameter this hole here and we can have a keyway or we can just avoid it it's all okay so these are the settings that I have okay for my uh, bigger bevel gear for 32 and uh, 16 and 20 these are the important things but we just have them in mind and uh, then we go ahead and create the pinion okay so this is the bevel gear I applied some color to it and now it's time as I said to go ahead and create the pinion so for pinion everything is the same just the number of teeth is 16 and for the gear of that we say 32 as you can see here so for the same 16 for this one 32 for the gear of it same pressure angle and everything else the same except for this hub diameter and mounting distance which we can change it the shaft diameter of this we can change and uh, the important thing for meshing are the gear modulus and the number of teeth and pressure angle these are the important things so let's say this is our pinion so here I just applied some color to it and we are going to call this bevel pinion and we are going to assemble okay so let's go to assembly bring the bevel gears and properly assemble them so here is the uh, bevel and bevel pinion let's bring them this is one this is the other one so again we need to make sure that they are properly in place so here I go ahead and select that one and maybe the top plane and make them coincident now first you need to make sure that they are float okay so uh, go ahead and make that one with the uh, top plane coincident so it can basically I only have a planar motion now we need to make sure it is spinning in place so I can choose the origin and I can also choose the axis of uh, the gear so this one and this one and I can make them coincident this way the gear should not be able to move and the only thing it can do is the rotation in place and this is exactly what we want for the bevel gear okay so the bevel gear is good and now it is um, time to put the um, pinion in place now again like last time one of the things you need to do is to show the profiles of the teeth and so uh, you really don't need the tooth itself you need the profile of the revolve of the tooth so you need to go under base revolve and uh, make sure that this sketch is 
basically uh, visible and you are going to do the same thing for the uh, pinion okay you make them visible and now you can use these two to uh, do the assembly so the first thing you need to do is the centers of the profiles here this one and here this one these two they have to be coincident okay so we choose these two and we make them coincident that's the first thing you need to do the second thing is make sure the axes of the holes are perpendicular so you do that one so now at least this pinion what it can do is uh, it cannot just freely move it has to be stay perpendicular to that but uh, the axis of it can rotate the axis of this can rotate about this one which it might be or if you want it in place then you need to have an extra constraint on this uh, pinion okay so for example you can choose this one and you can choose let's say the front plane of the assembly and uh, basically use a coincidence this way the pinion is only able to spin in place and not just freely move okay so you see it is doing its job and this one is doing its job but they are not working together so now i go ahead and uh, hide those sketches and uh first make sure that there is no interference and then apply the gear constraint so here you see that there is clearly interference so you need to spin one of them and uh, get rid of that interference here okay so let's go ahead and see if we can get rid of the interference here okay you can you can look at it from the back also if you want Okay, it might be helpful to see that from the back. And you can always go to evaluate. And you can always check. Okay, this is the accurate way to do it. You see it says no interference. So now I'm going to uh, apply the gear constraint. So go to mechanical, go to gears. And here I need to choose basically... Uh, to appropriate circles right so if i for example choose this one and this one i need to make sure the sizes are one to two and you see 1.85 and 3.44 that's not exactly one to two so here i can manually overwrite it as i said and make sure this one is 3.7 which is two times 1.85 and that should do the job okay so here if i do that and now if i move one of these the other one should move properly with it and you see it is doing its job right okay you can see that right you can select it and rotate it you see it is doing its job or you can grab this one and you see that it is working and you can of course go to motion study and apply a, a motor to one of them so let's say go here and let's say apply a uh, an rpm to the um, big one let's say 10 rpm and you okay that and go here for basic motion and then simulated it should do the job okay so you can simply perform a motion study here the motion study is done so let's take a look here we go you see it is doing properly the job and so the assembly is uh basically finished so hopefully this uh two assemblies rack and pinion and bevel and pinion were useful to you because these are very common in uh, mechanical devices and i'll see you in my next video thank you for your attention